Alright guys, today I'm going to be bringing you a review of the Marvel Legends Retro Wave Peter Parker action figure. A long overdue action figure of Peter Parker I've been waiting for for so long. Just a plain old Peter Parker. He's a cool figure, has some downfalls, has some really cool aspects of him. Let's talk about it. But before we talk about it, I need to make an announcement. So here we have McFarlane, DC Multiverse, Arkham Asylum, Batman, and Joker. And he does have a Batarang, it just kind of slipped and fell down, so that's a bummer. But it is in there, I can kind of see, you, can you see it there? There it is. I don't know how that happened, but when I bought him it wasn't like that, so that's a bummer. But these guys are completely free for you, depending on if you win this giveaway. So these are two giveaway items, okay, they both go to one person, and all you have to do is go to the Instagram post on my page where I announced this, tonight, the night I'm posting this video, and I will be ending this giveaway probably by Friday next week. And basically the deal is you gotta like that post, follow my Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube, and comment done on that announcement giveaway post on Instagram when you are done with all of it. And on that Friday next week, which would be B on my calendar, it would be the 24th, so July 24th on that Friday I will announce the winner via Instagram. So best of luck to you, I hope you guys all uh, participate in this giveaway. And on to the review before we talk about it, please subscribe, please like this video, please hit the notification bell if you can, that'd be really cool, and hey, subscribe, that's one part of the giveaway you can get done right now. So anyways, we have this cool retro card packaging, as I said in the previous reviews, really cool packaging. I really love that view of the city with the purples and the pinks. Very nice colors and contrast. Very cool. You can see here it says camera accessory right on the top. Nice image of Peter Parker there with his dual identity thing going on. And another nice, you know, Spider-Man logo like all the other packages that really resembles the animated series. Very nice stuff. The bottom it also says, uh, choking hazard for children. Not for children under three years. Or three years and under, I believe. Under three years, whatever. Okay, so Peter Parker. Peter Parker is a college student and photojournalist who is secretly the amazing Spider-Man. And one thing I want you to take note of here is the fact that in this little picture where you see the head swapping out, we get a Peter Parker head that does not have glasses. However, this one comes with glasses, and I mean, I wouldn't be upset with the glasses head if these glasses didn't look so freaking terrible but we'll talk about that more in a little bit again really nice packaging really nice art all the pictures are there on the bottom of the other figures in the wave so cool packaging overall really love that retro card so as i said about this head the glasses are a little awkward they almost look like they're upside down considering this little piece stretching across between the two lenses is kind of low and uh there's a lot of space going upwards if you can kind of see that it looks just a little awkward like the glasses are upside down you know what i mean it's it's hard to explain, but it they definitely look really awkward, honestly. And they do slide up, and you can see there is a nice face sculpted under that. And it would have just been nice if they honestly made these glasses removable or something. Kind of like with the Jubilee figure, we got some removable glasses. I don't know why they didn't do that, or why they didn't make these glasses, like, translucent. Or honestly, you didn't even have to put plastic um, in the rims of these glasses, really. We didn't have to have lenses, I mean... The Race Dance figure from the Plasma series, I believe, doesn't actually have lenses and still looks really nice. So, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of awkward looking at these glasses. But aside from that, it's a really clean head sculpt. Really nice sculpting work in the hair. Um, everything is really neatly painted and it has a cool uh, likeness to Peter Parker. So, I mean, it definitely kind of captures that classic Steve Ditko Spidey look from, like, Amazing Fantasy Comics and his first run. But these glasses look incredibly awkward, and you just can't see his eyebrows or anything. It looks really weird. And then we get this dual head sculpt here. We get Spidey and Peter Parker on one side. It is my favorite head sculpt out of the pack. There is a little bit of paint bleeding. There you can see some of the fleshy tone is on uh, the part of the mask that meets the face. And then there is some red bleeding over onto the face and a little bit of paint smudging right there. Aside from that, the line work is really clean. It looks just like a Steve Ditko comic book, uh, Spider-Man. Very nice Peter Parker head sculpt. It looks fantastic. Um, everything's really well done. These ears are really well done as well. Just really, really nice head sculpt overall. And it's I think it's really an important head sculpt that we've been lacking for a while. And I love that with this head sculpt. And I mean, 
we've seen this so many times, this imagery of, you know, that split face between Spider-Man and Peter Parker. And what's cool about it is we've probably seen it with many versions of the Spider-Man costume, but they choose they chose to do it with the Steve Ditko Spidey mask. And I really think that's really cool. I love that. But what's great about this head sculpt is is uh, it's just so, you know, well known. It really shows the whole story of Peter Parker and Spider-Man, you know. Peter's trying to find that balance between who he is and that, you know, balance between Spider-Man and Peter Parker. How does he balance the two lives? You know what I mean? And it's part of why Spider-Man is so relatable. You know, we're always trying to find a balance in our lives. We're trying to balance work and our social life and school and whatever. So, you know, it was always so central to Spider-Man. That's why I loved him when I was growing up. So I'm really glad we got this head sculpt and I love how it turned out. Very, very nice. And lastly, Pete comes with this really nicely done camera. Great sculpt work on the front. Love how the lens looks and the scope and everything. I love this little flash on the top. I believe that's a flash. It's a very kind of older style camera. Looks really dope. The back really doesn't have much detail on it. But aside from that, it's just overall very, very nice looking. Cool lens. Um, very nice work. So first off, here's Peter Parker with his just main plain head sculpt there with the Weirdly wonky glasses. I'm not really a fan of that. Just weird glasses in general. And then here he is with the dual head sculpt here. That dual identity head sculpt, which is just amazing. And here he is holding the camera, which he holds very well. And what's great about this guy, one of my favorite aspects is um, the articulation makes it so you can actually have him holding his camera as if he was literally you know, taking a picture. It's really organic looking. It takes a little bit of messing with, but for the most part it works. You can see this hand here kind of adjusts that photo lens so you can get that nice focus on it. Perfect range or whatever millimeters. Very, very cool. So you can see it really looks like he's holding a camera and taking a picture. And you can really, like I said, mess with that and just make it look just perfect, man. When I first got him out of the package, I, um, I wasn't sure if he was going to just hold the camera at his side or not, but it's really cool to see this. I'm glad that Hasbro kind of put that consideration in and did this. And honestly, the camera is such a great accessory. It's an accessory we didn't even get with the Mafix Spidey, which is really surprising, honestly. But yeah, if you tweak that enough, it will work. You can kind of line it up with his eye, so it really looks like he's taking a photo. But odds are, if you have this head sculpt on, you're probably going to have him looking off to the side like he's kind of a you know, aware of something that nobody else is aware of. You know, he's alerted about something. So, very cool camera, cool head sculpts. So far, so good. So taking a look at the detail on this guy, he has a really beautiful leather jacket, as you can see. Very nice sculpt work on it. I love all the different wrinkles on it. Um, the sleeves, I love how they're like tightening on the end. I love the uh, different pockets and buckles sculpted, the cool collars, very nice shirt underneath. The color scheme of this guy is also very cool. Very nice balance of colors here. I also like how they actually painted this belt buckle gold. That's very nice attention to detail as well. I don't really see a lot of paint scuffing on this guy at all. Honestly, I don't see really any problems with this actual outfit. It all looks very natural and cool. And like I said, I really like that they included this jacket on Peter. That's a cool look for him. The jeans, I'm not sure about that little point in the front here. How it kind of narrows towards the front and it's like triangular. I don't know how I feel about that. That I definitely don't have any pair of jeans that do that. So that looks kind of different. Um, Maybe it's some kind of different type of pants, so I have no idea. I don't know fashion. I'm not a huge fan of the white sneakers either. I think they're butt-ass ugly, but maybe he wore these in the comic book that they're, you know, deriving this look from. So, I, you know, you can't be too picky. I mean, it looks good for the most part. The sculpt work is great. The white's kind of ugly. I will say this, though. These little, like, uh, ankle pieces here where the ankle pivot is, you can see here it's like a bluish-white mix, which looks kind of crap. So that's a problem, but nothing that isn't fixable and nothing that really makes or breaks this figure for me. I mean, at the end of the day, this guy is super nice. He's a nice figure for $20, very nicely done. Um, he could have had some more accessories, I'll say that. He could have had some like open hands or a thwipping hand or something like that. And they could have really fixed that glasses problem. But aside from the problems I've talked about, I really don't have any other problems with this guy. He's a fun figure. I do believe he borrows the uh, body mold of the Stan Lee figure that comes with cap shield that has that like silver signature on the front. I don't own it, but from what I've seen in pictures, this is incredibly similar. There might be a few different parts though. I know the shoes are definitely different for sure because I'm pretty sure that's Stan Lee had dress shoes, 
but I cannot remember. But I'm pretty sure they share a lot of similar parts. So aside from that, very nicely done, nicely painted, cool figure, and um, you know, Peter Parker was long overdue. It's nice to have a separate Peter Parker from Spider-Man, but it really would have been cool to have those flipping accessories or something, you know? Because it's, it's cool in the comics when Peter's kind of caught off guard and his villains are after him when he's not in his whole Spider-Man getup. Would have been cool to have some displays like that or some photography and stuff. So, you know, kind of a lack of accessories, but you can look past it. Okay, so Peter Parker's head looks pretty far back, but it's actually kind of coming off the ball joint there. So, I mean, the jacket kind of hinders it. It can go down pretty far, but honestly, I think this neck joint just might be really, really stiff which is part of it. You can see it's kind of going back there. So I think it can look back pretty far too. It just, my neck joint is really stiff. It does look far forward though. It does have quite a neck pivot there. There is rotation all the way around. The arms do go out very, very far. So that's nice. They do go all the way around as well. They do have a rotation here, a swivel right at the bicep. There is double jointed elbows on this guy. There is a swivel at the wrist, rotation with a little hinge, and there is a hinge here too that points in a different direction than the opposite hand. So you can see it points downward. So that's very nice and it really allows you to put that camera at some dynamic poses that, and it really makes him look like uh, he's taken legit pictures. It's an organic look. Like I say in pretty much every review, I like the organic, natural look um, when it comes to posing a figure. And this guy has that when he's holding his camera. So that's a huge perk that's very nice. He does have a nice ab crunch, or fairly decent, I guess. Not going back though, mainly because I think the jacket kind of enters it, and it, no, his articulation just doesn't really allow for it, it seems. So that's kind of a bummer. Otherwise, there is a rotation here that kind of snaps, and you know, you see what I mean, kind of? Just kind of snaps in a place, it doesn't really get loose. The legs go out kind of far. They go forward very far. Um, they don't go, no, they kind of go back. There is a rotation here at the thigh. There are double jointed knees, which kind of look flat and awkward. And then there is no rotation down here at the ankles or the uh, shin, but there is a hinge at the foot, which kind of feels like it's gonna break, so I'm a little leery or just pop out maybe. And there is an ankle pivot. And then here is Peter Parker next to Spider-Man. You can see their exact same height, so that's cool. And then here he is next to Daredevil and Electro, and Electro seems to be a tiny bit taller, but honestly, from behind the camera here, he really doesn't look that much taller. But if you do flip him around, and you can see that mask, he really seems to tower Spidey. Otherwise, Daredevil and Peter Parker are the exact same height. And then here he is next to Gwen Stacy, who roughly stands like probably actually it, they're pretty much exactly the same height maybe she's a tad bit shorter and then obviously monster venom just towers both of them and then here he is next to norman osborne who is maybe a little bit shorter than spidey but for the most part you can you know kind of pass him off as the same exact height so at the end of the day i would definitely recommend buying this guy he's a really cool figure he's twenty dollars cool retro card packaging uh finally a, you know standalone marvel legends peter parker action figure some cool head sculpts aside from this one with the weird ass glasses get some nice hands for the camera it's a pretty basic figure but it's you know an important one in my opinion so i definitely recommend him anyways guys thank you for watching this review please go check out my instagram post announcing the giveaway follow the steps enter the giveaway first step you can manage right here if you haven't read anything about it subscribe and um you know stay tuned for more videos like i said check out the giveaway post and uh, like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you think of this guy, and most importantly, keep collecting. Peace out, guys.